Joining us now to review some of the headlines of today's newspapers from around the world is Arise News Analyst Emmanuel Efeni, the Great Malabite. Good morning, Reuven. <laughs> Good, Good morning, morning Ayo. Good, Good, Good morning, Rufai. We start the review with this day, Nigeria's newspaper of record. The lead story, PDP leadership in disarray fails to secure minority offices in National Assembly. G5 compromises party headship, steals the show. How other opposition parties sold out went for the money. Yes, the leadership of the National Assembly is complete. The minority leader of the Senate, is Senator Wang Kuang, who has just uh, been interviewed on this program. He's a PDP man, and uh, his emergence, of course, has settled the position of uh, the North Central not being represented in the leadership. But for the PDP leaders staying away or decided to stay away, as the senator has put it, well, a senator of the PDP here has emerged as the minority leader. And uh, Brother Ogidi yesterday was telling us that that senator will work for PDP. Well, Nigerians listened to the senator a short while ago. His assurances, his pedigree, perhaps he has a lot to prove uh, because he has the pedigree. And it would be surprising if he joined the bandwagon to be a rubber stamp. Because what will play out will even be worse than a rubber stamp. Uh, you know, in Lagos, when it comes to parliamentary matters, they say, Baba Sokwe. And we don't want that to be reflected at the national level, because that would be worse than rubber stamp. But these leaders are in place. Sometimes it is not how a man emerges as leader that matters. It is what he does with that position, how he acquits himself, distinguish himself, or fall the hand, to use a popular Nigerian uh, parlance, fall the hand of uh, uh, people who expect so much from him. So the leadership in place in the National Assembly. Well, you expect the PDP to be the one galvanizing all the minority parties, especially where they even have what they now call greater majority. But a party that cannot put its house in order, you expect to galvanize other parties. The PDP is learning the opposition game. As Ogidi puts it yesterday, they have not even learned that. You now want them to coordinate four other parties in the National Assembly. Well, we hope they will learn fast and know that the, our democracy needs robust opposition. Not opposition for the sake of it, but for the sake of the Nigerian democracy and for the interest of Nigerians who voted, everybody sitting there into power. Now, if we look at other newspapers reporting this story, the Nigerian Tribune, National Assembly officers, APC National Working Committee members, Fault Adamu Tinibu meets national chairman secretary in Aso Villa. Yes, here is a case where the party, um, even the APC, because if we're accusing the PDP leadership of not taking charge, align perhaps the G5. Uh, I don't know whether they still go by that acron that name G5 because many of them could not even win a senatorial election. I don't know where they are getting their strength from. Well, but Nyenson Wike, the governor of the, the former governor of River State, is a very active player, wearing the Yoruba cap all over the place. You know where his interests and uh, lies. Uh, no secret about that. And um, so, if the APC leadership don't know anything about uh, how the leadership emerged, as Adamu puts it, even describing the announcement as a rumor. The PDP that is even struggling with, within itself, at war within itself, I don't know how the leadership. The, the acting national chairman of uh, PDP, he seemed to be missing in action. 
uh, I can't even remember his name now. Uh, maybe somebody can help me there. But he's been lukewarm, quiet, and uh, when you expect him to provide leadership, he's not in sight. Now, the Daily Trust newspaper, Tinubu meets Adamo Mishore, resolves, in quotes, rift over principal officers, endorses Akpabio Abbas' actions, issue laid to rest. It is a family affair, the national chairman said after meeting with the president yesterday. Now, the Guardian newspaper, FX scarcity and Naira devaluation. Trouble in health sector as drugs. Cost of care spiked by 150%. Yes, the masses will really feel the pain. Now, it's like there's nowhere to hide. You go to the market, inflation is sky high. You go to the hospital, according to this report, cost of drugs and care now uh, gone up by 150%. You want to ask, who will save the masses? That is why we have a government in place, not just to tweak policies, because policies are for people. You don't tweak policies just for tweaking sake. How is it affecting the people? We want the government to now get down to the brass tacks to deal with the hardship that is becoming uh, prevalent in the land. The number of people who are primed to slip into poverty by December, 7.1, if this government, government does not act fast. Now, the Nation newspaper, discos intensify effort for electricity tariff hike approval. Distribution companies weigh option of gradual increase in what consumers pay. I know the next time we hear about this tariff hike, whether you call it um, cost reflective tariff and not um, service reflected tariff, it will be hardship again. Another um, round of hardship for consumers because the, the disco seemed hell bent on hiking tar tariff. Now, the Punch newspaper. Flood alert. State orders evacuation as federal government issues disaster warning. Nema one of massive flood in Kano, Delta, Kebi, Plateau, 10 others. Aquibom, Delta, other residents demand alternative shelters. It is not enough to just tell people living in areas that are prone to flood, there will be flood. What is the government of the various states doing to relocate? Some of these people before it happens, before they lost their belongings once again. I think that is where the effort should be concentrated right now. We've been hearing this kind of alert every year, and every year we just wait for uh, things to go bad with flooding of many communities, and the people find their way to IDP camps with their goods, with their belongings destroyed by flood. I think we need a better way to deal with this matter. Now, the Business Day newspaper, first negative FDI in, three, in 33 years, price pressure on Tinimbu. Yes, foreign direct investment inflows into Nigeria turned negative last year for the first time in the last 33 years. So, a lot of challenges uh, ahead. One of the 30 challenges, as uh, mentioned by uh, this day in that special report, facing the new president. How to get foreign uh, direct investment into the country? Well, the president has been started well by doing what's called economic diplomacy, but we need to see the result, perhaps more effort in the area of ensuring that the environment is conducive for investors. Policies are consistent uh, so that investors can plan. Now, the daily independent newspaper downtown shrinks aviation as carriers air traffic declines. Now, another story beside the photograph there. Rivers APC to Nwiki. You can't take our ministerial slots. Yes. Um, well, in River State, despite the, the fact that APC I had a candidate in that election. Of course, Tonya Ko was on a program yesterday, and he's still, he's still pursuing uh, 
the, his case at the, peti at the tribunal, well, with the romance between Yinsong Wiki, the former governor, and, of course, the government of the day, where who will appoint, nominate the ministerial slots for Rivers? That is a question. Ruben, Rufai, and Ayo. I mean, by default, if we are to follow what is on ground, normally the APC is supposed to take the ministerial slot in River State. But like you said, the romance is currently going on. And we all saw, even how Tonya Ko was treated in that elections, the fact that everybody now knows that there was a deal done here that too, prior to the elections, and the APC did a deal with the incumbent governor, you some wicked then. But let's see how it pans out. You know, in politics, you don't believe anything you see until it happens. So let's be very careful. In the end, you know, the man in court and everything, you know, well, they will sort themselves out. We have to go, Emmanuel Efeni. Uh, not enough time to, but I find quite interesting the front page story in the Guardian. Trouble in the health sector, uh, cost of care has risen by about uh, health care has risen by about fifty percent in a country where more than half of the population is relying on out of pocket expenditure. When I made the point yesterday about public By sector... 150%. Oh, 150%. Oh, it's even worse. Cost of drugs, cost, cost of, of care, care, and all of that. Yesterday, it was 75th anniversary of uh, the NHS. And I made the point about public sector funding. Public sector funding does not mean free service. People pay taxation. You know, there are levies and all that. From the and it's not a general... Because one of my friends was telling me, hey, what do you mean public sector funding? So I had to send him a definition of what public sector funding is. We need to take a second look at the funding of healthcare in Nigeria. Anyway, thank you very much, Emmanuel.